that was super fun. Um, that was uh, from Irv Kotler's I've Got You Under My Skins. That was my kind of town. This is a super fun book if you want to play through some um, Sinatra arrangements with uh, original uh, horn arrangements and stuff without vocals. Um, there are drums on the album, so you kind of have to deal with um, hearing Irv play <laughs> while you're playing. Um, and there's a couple of tracks where it really sounds like he fell off his drum stool at the end. It's really fun. Um, but you should definitely check this out. Irv Kotler, I've Got You Under My Skins. I got a copy of this when I was a kid. It was on a cassette, and I had a bunch of photocopies of charts. And then eventually it came out with a CD. And now I, maybe it's in digital. I don't even know. But Alfred puts this out. So Alfred has that. So definitely check that out. I thought it was appropriate since I'm doing a swing uh, topic tonight. So we're going to be talking about swinkopation, which is a uh, page from my book, Filling in the Grooves. And swinkopation, a system of using syncopation material. Ted Reed syncopation, syncopation right here uh, for the modern drummer. By the way, this book is probably on my bookshelf, my original copy from when I was a kid, which in a pinch, I couldn't find it. It's really beat up, and I've had it since I'm a child. But this I took off of my uh, student bookshelf. So uh, we're going to be referring to source material from here, and I'm going to be basically teaching uh, a very, very simple system of using syncopation uh, for swing figures. And tonight I'm going to be doing the basic swing conversion and how to take uh, syncopation figures and do, we're not going to be doing the independent stuff tonight. That's going to be another part to this. We're going to be doing more of how to fill out the figures with swing. In the description to this uh, live stream, there's a PDF that you can download and you can check that out. So I'm going to be using syncopation set two as the source. If you just take eighth notes, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and start to move the ands away from the downbeats, it starts to swing in varying degrees as you move that note further and further away. We're going to move it into triplets. So we're going to go from one and two and three and four and to one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one, lit two, lit three, lit four, lit one. Our swing conversion is eighths to triplets. That's the basic idea. And of course, you know, if you saw eighth notes written down in a piece and it said swing, you would swing those based on feel, right? So if it, let's say it was written like straight eighths, but it said swing, you would know to sort of play a shuffle kind of feel perhaps. So, so then that eighth note groove, one and two and three and four and one and two, uh, three and four and one and two and three and four. Now I'm going to play this one handed for the moment. One and two and three and four and one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one and two, three and four and one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one. If I move that pattern to here, one and two and three and four and one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four, let one, let two, let three, let four, let one. So this would be um, example 1C. I'm going to put in the in-between notes on the snare drum, meaning the trip of that one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four, one. So here's, here's the filling in between. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one. And then we're going to attach the bass drum to the ride cymbal part, and we get this. So we're playing kind of a shuffle with the bass drum on the ones, the one in the lit. So this is just kind of preliminary. Now, quarter notes. Quarter notes are going to get interpreted like this. One, two, three, four. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So I'm 
filling in the triplet with the opposite hand, the leading hand, if we put it on the ride symbol, we get this. So, and, and again, this isn't the independence exercise where we're going. We're actually working on a simpler thing where we're basically splitting up the hands. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one. But so far we have for our substitutions, one, two, three, four, and we have one, two, three, four. And those two elements we're gonna start to mix and match. Uh, 3A. Now 3A is basically syncopation set to number one. Back to that one and two and three, four, one and two and three. Now if I swing that, we get one triplet, two triplet, three, four, one triplet, two triplet, three, four, one, So the ride symbol is going to play the womp up, da ding da ding da da ding da. One triplet, two triplet, three, four. One triplet, two triplet, three, four. And then we're going to fill in the snare drum on all the rests. So we get this. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. If you look at example 3D, I'm going to double the bass drum on the ride cymbal part. So taking out the snare hand for a moment, we get. And then I'm going to start filling in the snare drum in between all of that. So now we have this nice little figure that's getting filled in between. And, you know, stylistically, as long as it's a triplet feel or a swing feel, it will fit. I could be playing shuffles and then utilize that idea. Let's say there was a figure that the band was playing and they were going. It's just a nice way to approach a figure. It stays in that sort of groove position. Notice that the snare drum is staying pretty quiet. I'm playing on a 24 inch bass drum, by the way, so I'm trying to keep that bass drum quiet, but it's, it's a little bit of a challenge with this size drum. I'm playing pretty light. If you look at my foot, I wind up playing like down here, really close, just using my toe more or less. You know, that same figure, as I said, can be in a bunch of syncopation methods, uh, so to speak. I mean, it could be if you're doing independent stuff. so we can put that on different limbs. But again, we're dealing with this sort of, it's kind of a linear idea, right? We're playing, the limbs really aren't overlapping except for the bass drum. The hands are very linear. And of course, there could be, right? We can move that around the kit, we can orchestrate. The next one that we have 
is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So I'm gonna skip the conversion because we I think we have that by now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Now I'm gonna fill that in. So, and by the way, notice that I'm, you know, trying to basically always keep the two and four on the hi-hat so that it keeps it grounded in, in the swing feel. So that way, if you are playing straight ahead swing and you go to that, you're not deviating too far from, from your feel. Here's syncopation set to number two. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, and 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 two, and three, and four. So hands only one. So let's see, so first one into the second one. Now here's the third one. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two. Again, the process, start, play the figure, go to the ride. And then we fill in that bass drum. Play with the orchestrations, depending on the style that you're playing. Uh, you could get big with those, keep it nice and small with the ride cymbal. And actually, now thinking about it, you could do some things like this. So, So in a halftime shuffle, these would work as well. This will be from my sheet. It'll be number 4A. <laughs> my goggles, I can't see. Did I bring my glasses over here? Oh, I did. So it's 5A. This one starts with a rest. So check this out. So 1 and 2 and 3, 4. 1 and 2 and 3, 4. 1 2 and 3, 4. And 1 and 2 and 3, 4. So I call this a touch stroke. And the reason is the ride cymbal hand will touch down to fill in the notes. If it was two eighth notes up front, I would be going one and two and three, four. But since there's a rest in the front, I'm going to bring this hand down. I'm not going to play an accent. I'm going to play as low as I can. One triplet, one triplet. So I get right, left, right. So that way you see that I'm, I call it a touch stroke because I'm touching down with the, ride, with the riding hand. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. So it would go like this. So if I was playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four.
right? So that little touch stroke kind of fills it in so that we can stay in that riding hand sticking. Here's another one that has a touch stroke in the middle now. So we're going to play example, I guess this would be 6A. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two. So we have that little... Triplet, four triplet. One, two, three triplet, four triplet. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. The next one that we're going to look at is a bigger gap. So we're number seven A, seven B, seven C, seven D. So we have this. One and two. We're changing the rules slightly. Left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right. We just reverse the sticking. Okay, so we get this. So the tactic for that is two of those touch strokes. Left, left, right, 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 left, left, right. So that one, it's kind of nice. It's, it's pretty sparse. Um, but if you had that figure to play, that's one approach to getting that done. And, and again, like if I just played in the more in the traditional independence way, it's pretty open. But if we were looking to fill that up and make it more of a fill type of thing or more of a feature, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put together four of those bars. Like so if we were to go to the Ted Reed page uh, and go to lesson exercise one, we would have the first four bars as this. So you notice I did two of those touch strokes in this whole thing. So the first one, example one, right? That was our first one. Second one had that touch stroke. Third one. And then the fourth one, I did a touch stroke on that quarter note rest that's in the end of it. So first I'll play some swing and then we'll kick into that. So one, two, one, two, three. Let's compare it to like advanced techniques for the modern drummer. If I played it all on the snare. It's fine. It's more of a comping thing, sort of like the uh, Irv Kotler big band chart. I was kind of playing the comping in my, in my uh, right hand or your left hand. Uh, if we move it around the drum set, this could also be orchestrated like this. If we mix and match. as I said in the next live where I go to sort of the part two of this thing I think we're going to get more into the independence version of it and it, uh, for instance here's a great one that um, I haven't played this in a while but Marvin Smitty Smith showed me this thing so you play 
as your ostinato. So I'm playing broken. And then you play the melody in the bass drum. So we would have this. So that's pretty fun. If there's any questions or if there's anybody in there that I can say hello to, I'm going to do that now. And uh, I don't know if there's anybody in the chat. Is there anybody in there, Billy, Billy, Billy? We have Stefan Chamberlain. Ah, uh, Stefan. He's such a nice -a boy. I love you, Stefan Chamberlain. <laughs> yeah, Rocco <laughs> says good job. <laughs> but thank you, Rocco, for tuning in. What else we got going on in there? Louis Larson says hello or hi. Louis Larson! How you doing, buddy? I miss you. How you doing? Who else is in there? And Stefan says the way the front camera moves is amazing. Yeah, we, we hired this little kid, and he <laughs> just stands there, and he walks back and forth with the camera. <laughs> I know it's probably, you know, would be frowned upon, but the, the kid is nice. <laughs> he doesn't talk. He just stands there and walks back and forth with the camera. It's really crazy. I, I'm just going to say where the influence came from for this stuff. There's a Steps Ahead record that Steve Gadd played on, uh, and it's like a red cover. I can't remember the name of the, the record. I think I might have mentioned it in my book um, talking about, because I was definitely had some influence from that with this stuff. By the way, the syncopation, the syncopation page in the book has 10 examples. It pretty well explains the system in there. I appreciate the support. Uh, definitely hit that notification bell so you find out about the next ones that are coming up. If you're interested in my book, it's out there. Uh, it, get it from um, Wisdom Media, or it's on Amazon as well. It's also in digital on Hudson Digital, so check that out. And we have a very special guest that just chimed in. Who chimed in? Dale Piscano. Oh, my God, it's my mom. <laughs> you know, I, I said this last week. She's She's kind of responsible for, like, making this all happen because she got me my first drum set. I think I was probably a handful when I was a kid, and she was like, you know, what can I do to keep this child busy? And she got me drums, and it's kept me busy ever since. Yeah, so thanks, Mom. I appreciate that. Thanks for chiming in. And uh, I just, you know, a special thanks to Billy, who's my right-hand man. He's here every week running cameras and running sound. Billy's the man. He's uh, the man behind the scene. He's like, <laughs> he's like Willy Wonka, not Willy. Yeah, like Willy Wonka. No, who's the guy from, uh, from the Oz? He's like Oz. He's <laughs> the man behind the curtain. <laughs> the, the wizard. <laughs> the wizard. <laughs> the wizard of Oz. That's the guy I was talking about. <laughs> Just real quick, I want to mention um, the folks at Sabian Symbols. These beautiful symbols that I play uh, are from Sabian, and these wonderful pedals from Offset that um, that I really love, which are pretty interesting pedals and i may have to do something just on these pedals at one point thank you thank you thank you i am actually signing off now i'll see you guys next monday 8 30 p.m eastern standard time and uh i'll see you there have your drumsticks and let's do it take care